Thank you for viewing this webinar on NextGen Alahar Software. This webinar will provide an overview of the applications and workflow for NextGen Alahar. NextGen Alahar is a user-friendly tool for the analysis of long-read sequencing data, such as data from Pacific Biosciences systems. NextGen Alahar can be used for multiple applications, including structural variation detection, mitochondrial DNA analysis, including low-frequency variant detection and haplotyping, and also STR expansion analysis. There are a few settings to review before beginning analysis with NextGene Alahar. Click the Settings icon. The first setting is to define the path for the gene annotation GFF file. This will provide the annotation shown in NextGene Alahar. A link to download the required gene annotation files is provided along with the NextGene Alahar software installation file. If you haven't already downloaded, you should do so before moving forward. The files can be saved to any location on your computer. Click the button to browse to and select the saved gff.gz file. The next setting allows you to define a default reference folder. When loading reference files, this directory will be opened by default for convenience. Click the button to browse to and select a folder where your reference files will be stored. Click OK to save these settings and close the settings dialog. Now we can go on to set up a new analysis. Click New. Under Reference List, click Add. This will open a dialog showing the directory set as the default reference directory. You can load multiple reference files in FASTA format. Click to select your reference files. You can select multiple files when applicable for your data. Click Open to load the files. Then under Sample List, click Add. Here you can select your sample files. Sample files can be loaded in FASTA or FASTQ format. You can load multiple samples at once. The samples will be analyzed separately and saved together as a project. Click Open to load your selected sample files. A default location for the project folder is displayed at the top of the dialog. The folder path is the same as the location of the sample files, and the folder name is based on the first loaded sample file. You can click the button under Project Folder to modify this location as needed. Under the project folder setting, the gene annotation file path is shown. Confirm that this is set correctly before proceeding. Then click OK to begin the analysis. As the samples are processed, the project viewer is updated to show the progress. When a sample is completed, on the left side, a button with the sample name becomes active. Once this happens, you can click on the button to load the sample's results in the viewer. Samples can also be loaded in the viewer later using either one of two options. First, you can load the full project in the project viewer again by clicking the down arrow next to Open and selecting Open Project. Then click the button to browse to the location where the project.pjt file was saved. Then click OK. This will load the project in the project viewer with the buttons active for each sample. Click the name of any sample to open the sample in the viewer. The second option is to click the Open button to open the viewer. Then go to File, Load BAM. Then browse to and select the BAM file saved by NextGene Elahar for the sample. This is found in the output folder where the project.pjt file is also saved. When the results are initially displayed in the NextGene Alahar Alignment Viewer, the Pileup Viewer and Structural Variation Table are the default view. The Pileup Viewer is the upper portion of the viewer. One chromosome is displayed at a time. If the reference contains more than one chromosome, the chromosome for display can be selected from the drop-down menu at the top left. The top of the pileup viewer shows the reference positions with the reference annotations directly below. Blue arrows represent gene regions. Green arrows represent mRNA regions. 
and brown arrows represent coding regions. In the middle of the pileup viewer, reference and consensus sequences are shown. Zoom in to view the nucleotides in these panes. You can zoom in using either of two options. First, you can draw a box around a region to zoom in on this region. Second, you can also use the zoom bar next to the chromosome drop-down menu. Below the reference and consensus panes, the read pileup is displayed. Red is used for reverse-oriented reheads, and blue is used for forward-oriented reheads. Similar to the reference and consensus panes, the nucleotide sequence is displayed after zooming in. Below the pileup viewer, a report pane is shown. The structural variation report, variant report, and haplotype report can each be shown in this pane based on which report is selected for display. Again, the default report shown when a sample is first opened is the structural variation report. The chromosome drop-down menu also determines which chromosome is displayed for the report. The structural variation report is designed for detection of variants greater than 50 base pairs in size. Information shown in the report for each variant includes the variant type, the number of reads found to contain the structural variant, the chromosome coordinates for each breakpoint, the total coverage at each breakpoint, and the allele frequency at each breakpoint. The allele frequency is determined based on the SV coverage divided by the total coverage for the breakpoint. You can modify the report settings by going to Edit, Structural Variation Report Settings. Click on the Display and or Filter tabs to specify the settings for the report. You can also save the report settings by clicking on Save. A saved configuration file can be loaded in the future by clicking Load. Click OK to return to the report using the specified settings. You can double click on any structural variation in the report to view the variation in the read pileup. A solid line is shown connecting two parts of a read where gaps occur. You can save the structural variation report by going to Report, Save Structural Variation Report. To view the variant report for smaller indels and substitutions, click Show Variant Report at the top of the viewer. This report provides annotation and statistical information for each detected variant, including the chromosome position, gene name, exon number, C dot mutation call, amino acid change, and the total coverage at the variant position, variant frequency, and read counts and frequencies for each nucleotide and insertions and deletions at the position. You can modify the report settings by going to Edit, Variant Report Settings. Click on the Display and or Filter tabs to specify the settings for the report. The Filter tab also includes two sub-tabs, one for statistical filters such as frequency and coverage, and another for filtering for regions of interest, or ROIs. On the Filter tab, Statistics sub-tab, variant reporting thresholds can be set for the variant percentage, variant allele coverage, total coverage, and indel variant percentage. A minimum value is listed for each of these. For chromosome M, the minimum values are lowered to allow low-frequency variant detection. As with the Structural Variation Report, you can also save the report settings by clicking on Save. The saved configuration file can be loaded in the future by clicking Load. Click OK to return to the report using the specified settings. Double-click any variant to bring the variant position into view. You can select Save Variant Report from the Reports menu to save the variant report. You can select to save the variant report as either text or VCF format. The haplotype report is available for chromosome M only. If your data includes chromosome M along with other chromosomes, be sure to first select chromosome M from the chromosome drop-down menu. Then click Show Haplotype Report. The haplotype report is broken up into two sections. 
the top lists the detected haplotypes for the sample. The bottom lists the haplotype assigned to each read within the sample. For mixtures, haplotypes can be detected at frequencies as low as 0.1%. For each reported haplotype, the haplotype name, frequency of the haplotype, and lists of variants found in the sample consensus and reported in the reference for the haplotype are provided. The haplotype report can be saved by going to Report, Save Haplotype Report. The final report in the NextGene LR Alignment Viewer is the STR Expansion Report. To access this report, select Open STR Expansion Report from the Report menu. Here you can define the STR regions of interest. A default list of STR regions is provided. Regions can be added to or removed from this list one at a time, or you can upload a bed or text file with the regions to be included. Then click OK to open the report. The report shows a graphic with all the STR regions listed on the left. For each STR loci, there is a line color-coded based on length relative to the scale shown at the bottom. Green is used for lengths within the normal range. Gray represents the pre-mutation range, and red indicates the affected range. For each loci, blue boxes show the repeat lengths detected in the sample. If multiple repeat lengths are found for a locus, there can be multiple blue boxes per line. For each blue box, the top number shows the repeat length, and the bottom number shows the number of reads with this length. To save a text report for the repeat lengths of all loci, click Save STR Expansion Report. Thank you for viewing this webinar on NextGene LR software for long read data analysis. If you have any questions, please contact us at tech underscore support at softgenetics.com.